welcome here to another edition ladies and gentlemen i now take this opportunity to welcome you on ptv africa your number one informative and educative channel remember our slogan on ptv africa is the voice to the voiceless and we are here most of the time to discuss about the african issues the issues that concern us as africans and some time to share knowledge about africa and ah, in the long run we shall also be looking at what are the challenges that we face as Africans and we shall pave our way to the solution of such problems and see what we can do to make sure Africa becomes great again. A quick reminder of what we discussed in the previous session, ladies and gentlemen, we are answering a simple question, what is Africa? To remind you a little bit, we said that Africa is the second largest continent our, our, our on uh, largest, largest second largest continent in the whole world I remember in that previous show i discussed the seven continents which begins with asia africa and north america america to mention but a few those things are in our previous recording if you want to go back if you want if you missed up the show you go to our youtube channel ptv africa you will go and find that information clearly explained there Remember, I also took time to discuss the regions that make Africa. They include East Africa, Central Africa, West Africa, North Africa, South Africa, and I clearly explained what contains and what entails in those regions, and I named the notable counties, countries that make those regions. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are joining us on this channel, please go back and see the, our previous video, all those information or that information is entailed in that video that discusses that answers the question what is africa ladies and gentlemen now i come again to welcome you on this very show the very lovely show where we are again talking about yet another topic about africa and i am taking this chance also to introduce the number one enemy of africa and the number one enemy of Africa that we are going to discuss, uh, to, to look at today, is none other than a person called a European. A European comes from uh, the European continent, which is the, 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 the second smallest, uh, the smallest continent in Africa, we call it Europe. These people came in Africa disguising that they loved Africa, disguising that they came from humanitarian reasons, disguising that maybe they are going to improve Africa. We appreciate what they did. I am not disregarding it. But the main agenda for critical thinkers like you and I could be different from what they really, they, what, what they were portraying and what they actually did on African land. So this European I'm going to talk about, I will be mentioning specifically to some of the people who did great work, the so-called great work in Africa. And we put, we touch into it and see, was the agenda clear? clear? Was it intending to benefit Africans? What was the actual mission of these Europeans that came to the great continent? The continent I'm talking about, with all the energy, the continent is called Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm talking about Africa, I feel empowered. I feel the spirit of Pan-Africanism is high. I feel that I am talking about the continent, the continent which is the second largest, the continent which is the corridor of mankind, the continent that is the first, that, that first produced great thinkers, great men, and great designers, and great everything. Remember the first person to be created by God was in Africa. The first person to be created by God is in Africa. And actually, if there is any place recognized very much by God in the Bible, is Africa. We shall be discussing all those in our subsequent programs. But now I feel joy and encouraged to be with you on this particular channel and to be with you on this particular show. Remember, I am called Anatora Nitor Tachema, double A R, a man of a peace and revolution, a man who loves Africa, and a man who needs to see the future of Africa brighter, a man who loves to see that our generation and the generation to come finds Africa a better place than it is and than it was. Ladies and gentlemen, having spoken all that much, allow me now to take you directly to the topic I want to discuss. The person I want to talk about is called Henry Martin Stanley. Henry Martin Stanley, for those of you who read uh, history and geography, you all know that he was one of the first explorers that came to Africa. 
Remember, when I am discussing Henry Martin Stanley, I am discussing him as the greatest and the number one enemy of Africa because he came as an explorer and his role and duty was very clear to make sure that he explore Africa and get right information and send it back. But what, why I call him a, a, a great enemy of Africa is that of all that he found in Africa, the beautiful sceneries, the beautiful plateau, the beautiful lakes and rivers, the beautiful mountains, the beautiful beautiful people, the beautiful kings, everything that was good, he didn't look at that. But what he did, he ended up giving Africa a wrong name. The Henry Martin Stanley I'm talking about is the real person who named Africa as a dark continent. Remember in my last show I said I disagree with him a hundred percent and here are the reasons as to why I am disagreeing with Henry Martin Stanley and I would call upon you much as he died and other people who had negative attitude about Africa I call upon you also to call them our enemies so that it gives us courage to work hard as Africans to make sure that what we do in Africa is of African origin and we focus on developing Africa social economic stability sees the light of the day in our drought continent. Ladies and gentlemen, this Henry Martin Stanley I'm talking about did all this nonsense of naming Africa a dark continent in a year well known to be 1878. Most of you are not yet born, even me, the, the Kanwakagamba, <laughs> the, the mouth that speaks now, uh, I, was already, I, was, I was also not there. But uh, I, I feel disappointed with him because I'm sure he saw so much good in Africa to call Africa that continent. It is very unfortunate. And we as Pan-Africanists, we must come out and refuse his facts. We must come out and denounce his facts. We must come out and discourage the coming generation to believe so because it is a wrong assertion. Ladies and gentlemen, the Africa I'm talking about is, has its original name. The original name of Africa, ladies and gentlemen, disregarding what this uh, Henry Martin Stanley named Africa, the major uh, the name is called Arkebran. Arkebran is, I will not go to the details of which the word means, but the meaning of this word itself means that Africa is the mother of mankind, like I previously discussed. Africa is also referred to as the Garden of Eden. For those of you who read the Bible very much or who read simple, who go to church and most of you do not read your Bible, that's why a lot of things happen in the churches and no one can ask, no one can refuse, no one can do this. For some of you are great followers than the, the real uh, believers. Now, this is what I'm saying. For those of you who read the Bible, you will go that when, man, when God created man um, in his image and likeness, the first thing that he did, he put him into the garden, which is called Eden, and he said, all these have set before you. Eat, drink, govern them, name them, if including the gods and whatever. For those who, when time comes for the Bible, we shall go in the faith and reason. I have another program that will be doing exactly here on PTV Africa called Faith and Reason. When we go to the Bible, I enter there and we discuss these people. So, for those of you who knew that Africa was called a dark continent, yes, it was called by a dark continent, but now this is the real name of Africa. Arkeblan, which means mother of mankind and which means the garden of Eden. Visit your Bibles, Genesis, I think Genesis chapter 1, verse 16. You will see God creating man, and after creating man, he will give him where to stay. And where he's going to stay is a garden of Eden, and that garden of Eden is what is well known to be Africa. And I must tell you that Africa, God loved it so much that he put almost everything and when you go to Africa, you only enjoy the environment. You only enjoy the fruits. You will enjoy the natural and the natural beauty of every item in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, the man I'm talking about, Henry Sarah Martin, was born on 28th January 1841 in UK. In UK. I'm talking about the name of Africa because of all things that he saw in Africa, why could he choose to call Africa that continent? This guy, who like any other human being, also died. Henry Martin Stanley died 10th May uh, in 1904 in a place called Westminster in London, UK. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm still talking about Henry Martin Stanley, uh, who I say in my analysis and understanding and the love of Africa I have, that of all things I saw, it was wrong for him to call Africa a dark continent because Africa has got its original name, which I've told you it is called Arikubran, which means mother of mankind, which means Eden or Garden of Eden. And Garden of Eden, for those who read the Bible, you know, it has everything. It has, it is a place that has everything. And some of you who come from Africa like I do, you know 
Africa has almost everything. And the challenge, the challenges that we have are very simple, are also European created and our leaders created. Because some countries have a challenge where the leaders, the presidents, are richer than the countries they lead. We shall come to that. But God endowed Africa with a lot of resources and he gifted it with a lot of, of brilliant people to make sure to, to work and live independently. Because it is the only continent that God created with all his energy and the love that he had for this universe. So do not go there and sympathize with yourself and say, what did you No, 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 no. Africa is the richest, is the richest continent. If all of us can sit down and understand the beauty and the greatness that this God loved us for. Ladies and gentlemen, um, who owes again Henry Martin Stanley? Because I'm introducing him to you that you know how much he died. He is an enemy of Africa. This gentleman that you talk, we were talking about, he also died. He died of dysentery. They say he died of malaria and dysentery. Uh, now, who was he? He was American explorer, journalist, soldier, and a colonial administrator in the parts uh, in the parts of Africa called West. I mean Central Africa. And I would like to refer you to my previous recording which I made. That recording, uh, it talks about Central Africa and gives the countries. But to highlight simple, simply, you have Cameroon, you have Chad, you have Congo, you have Burkina Faso, and the Central African Republic as some of the countries where this guy called Henry Martin Stanley had or could do his activities very well. And if you want to know more about uh, Henry Martin Stanley and uh, his activities in, in, in Central Africa, you visit Congo. He is the one who led the, 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 the leadership, who attempted, I mean, he paved the way for Leopold. If you know the King, the king Leopold II in Congo and the activities he did and the gold and the, the diamond that he took to his country, you will really understand what I'm talking about, that this guy called Henry Martin Stanley and other explorers who had another mission, not of liberating Africa, but they had a mission of entrenching, of stealing from Africa and taking everything to their home countries. And that's the major reason as why when you go to Europe, Europe is more developed than we are. Ladies and gentlemen, now, what are the reasons that advanced by scholars as to why this guy uh, made a decision to call Africa a dark continent? Ladies and gentlemen, one of the reasons that the people advance is it is that the, that the Europeans or whites are, were ignorant about Africa, something which I disrepute. I will tell you why I don't agree that they were, that that, uh, that Africa, now Europeans didn't know about Africa. Because being the second largest African, being the... Uh, the, the, the um, being the second largest continent and being endowed with all the great natural resources on this planet world, how come that these people never knew? But who invited them anyway? If we are nothing, if we are that continent, who invited them to come and explore our area? That one I refuse it and I will continue to explain why. And uh, some of the other reasons that uh, that are advanced as why this guy called Africa that continent, they say that they they were the inability for them to sail to sail through Africa easily because of the plateau and the Sahara Desert. So because they had uh, they had so many problems and they had to, to reach where they wanted to steal gold and diamond in Africa ivory and the rest of the raw materials they wanted. So in their mind and thinking, they developed ah this could be a dark continent. And uh, another thing uh, that the other scholars and historians advance, they say that these people, uh, Henry Martin Stone and his group, to call Africa Dark Continent, uh, that uh, uh, it was uh, the, the kings of that time, well, most of them resisted their attempts to, to colonize Africa, ladies and gentlemen. But what are the major reasons as to why these Europeans came to Africa? Let me turn my video. Number one, it is believed and argued and all researchers agree that these people, their major purpose of coming into Africa was not to liberate Africa, but instead they wanted to increase the European geographical knowledge about Africa. Two, they wanted to have the sea route to India. Remember these Europeans um, wanted also the way, way through to India and you know India is also in Asia and so people uh, uh, the, these Europeans were looking. As you know, America, America does not have friends. It has interest. You either have what they want, so that you become their friend, but if you don't have anything that they need, then you will never be their friend. 
So what I'm talking about you people, you in one day, one time, believe with me be, uh, when you want to follow this channel, we shall be sharing. Remember, I always tell you that I am not a monopoly of wisdom about Africa. You could be knowing Africa better than I do. But may I fear that what I know and what I research about, I come and share with the young generation and the generation to come. And you never know, someone can learn something out of this. Now, these are the reasons that I advance as to why um, that uh, as to, uh, to, to distribute the reasons as to why this uh, Henry Martin Stanley called Africa a dark continent. They claim, the Europeans claim, that they didn't know about Africa until the 19th century. I say it wasn't true. Why am I saying it wasn't true? These, the research and the books that we have accessed and they have accessed themselves, believe and tell us that Europeans knew Africa 2,000 years back, before the 19th century. Why did they have to call Africa that continent? They wanted to legitimize, to legitimize slave trade. Because someone who needs to first, uh, sometimes if someone wants you to be a slave, uh, he will must first make sure that he does things that lowers your self-esteem so that you look at him as God, you look at him as if you cannot survive without him. So in their way, in their internal mo motives, they wanted to legitimize slave trade. It should be noted that this issue that they are raising, the African kingdoms, the African kingdoms and African kings had started trading with Arabs in years 1,300 ago. So for them to claim that they had not known much about Africa, it is a lie. And that's why I say I will not be judged wrong to assert that these people, Henry Martin Stanley, he should be regarded as the greatest enemy of Africa because it was also good. It would be, a, it would have been better if all the information he gathered gave Africa a good name than he gave, because that's the reason I call him a what, um, a, a, an enemy of Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, history is very clear that Europeans' maps themselves indicate a, Moro a Moroccan, Moroccan, someone from Morocco, a Moroccan tra traveler called Ibn Battuta. Ibn Battuta traveled across, uh, uh, across and along the north and east coast of Africa in years 13,000. 13, Most of you who have traveled to UAE and uh, UAE, uh, I mean United Arab Emirates and countries, you know of the great Moor called Ibn Battuta Mon. Ibn Battuta Mall is named after this guy I'm talking about. This, this, this Ibn Battuta traveled in Africa along the coast and he was trading with Africans and the Africans were dealing with him so much. And to, 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 to cut the story short, for Europeans to claim that Africa didn't know, didn't, little was known about Africa, there was no history, that history of Africa began with Europeans, it is quite wrong. It is a wrong assertion because the Ibn Battuta and the Arab traders had dealt with African kings for a long time and if they never knew about Africa, Africa, then they wouldn't have come to Africa to trade with us. If they didn't know that we had resources they wanted, then they wouldn't have come. So I disqualify the assertion of these Europeans asserting that they called African dark continent simply because they knew less about Africa. It is, they knew much about Africa and is the reason as why they came and they got what they wanted because they knew about Africa had what they wanted. Ladies and gentlemen, Stan Henry Martin, the one I'm talking about, in his books, all his assertions and his words that we came across also, he himself recalls that he has ever read about uh, over 30 books about Africa. We wonder, is he the one who wrote about 30 books that he read? So Africa was well known. They did people not receive you? I go, if I can give you an example. There is a, a river in my country called River Nair. River Nair is the one of the longest rivers in Africa. There is, a, there is what we are taught in class that who oh, discovered the source of River Nile and they mention a white man. Really, ladies and gentlemen watching this channel, you must be careful. Should we say that in Jinja there were no people? Let's agree to disagree. In Jinja, where is the source of this Nile comes from? Where we find this, the source of this River Nile? Where there are no people? Why should they come and quit themselves that they discover the source of River Nile as if no one knew about River Nile? You see, we must now start understanding and disregarding the history that was manifested to us and which is wrong. And this is the major purpose of PTV, an online channel, which I'm telling. You can go to YouTube, to our YouTube channel, just put, put TV, PTV Africa, subscribe and watch this video live and clear and give a comment if you can. Support us, we shall also support you. You never know, God being our helper. As I conclude, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we already discussed what Africa is. And I'm telling you, Africa 
he is well known as Arkebram. Arkebram meaning mother of mankind and meaning garden of Eden. And for the you believing in the Bible, you know that the garden of Eden, God had everything in that garden uh, except Eva, who he later created and put there. You know, it is also in that chapter that God gives authority to man, you and you, that we govern everything on this world. So a simple question comes to you. If the first person, if it is true by history, that the first person to be created by God was an African, and he was given mandate to govern all over this country, why are you traveling from your Africa, from your different countries, to go to Europe, to go to other continents, seeking for employment, seeking for visa? You're looking for so much, as if there is there is nothing you can do for your country. And you know, These people have brainwashed us to understand that theirs is better, ours is bad, right? And that is what they, uh, we are struggling to, 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 to speak against, so that, that the generation to come can understand that Africa is better and they participate in the politics of Africa to make sure that we, Africa gets united. And when it gets united, from east, west, central, south, north, and whatever, we shall have enough resources to take care of African children, to take care of, of the development of Africa, to take care of the economy of Africa. And in so doing, Africa would be independent. The African countries would be independent. The African countries shall retain their respect. The African leaders shall again, shall again have the glory that they had before. Because I'm asking myself, we have had so many presidents in Africa, and we still have so many presidents in Africa. But when you group them all, the presidents of 54 countries that you have in Africa, no one can speak no. across or beyond his country. But a gentleman, one gentleman called uh, uh, Nkwame Nkrumah, one of the great presidents of Ghana, who ruled the country, that's country for a few years, who I will be bringing in detail in the forthcoming programs, he could stand in one position like in Addis Ababa in a conference and speak only one word and the whole Africa catches fire. We are asking what is wrong with the current presidents of Africa, right? What is wrong with them? Why can't they speak and even a neighboring country hears what they are saying? What is wrong? We, they have lost the genesis of what Africa st stood for and the rest of African countries or the former the Pan-Africans of a long time ago, the presidents that I'm talking about are in Kwame Nkrumah, I'm talking about the president, the former hitherto president of Burkina Faso called Thomas Sankala, who led that country for 40, uh, only four years, but he impacted and made a great change in that country. What happened to the current presidents? This is a question that you and I can ask. But the problems and the challenges all are going to be enshrined and be discussed on this one and only PTV channel, the online TV, that he aims at doing the informative and educative show, shows about Africa so that we can learn, we can share wisdom to make sure that we liberate our Africa, we liberate everything that was taken away from us to retain the glory of Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, now to conclude this story, it must, it, it, this, uh, this show, it must be noted clearly that the Africa existed before the coming of Europeans. That's the first thing that all of us need to learn. Existed before the coming of what? Of Europeans. And Africa never needed Europeans because they had enough resources despite their primitivity and assassin that they make. Africans could make their own food, Africans were cooking pots, that they call modernization. Sometimes it was good, but that's the reason as to why most Africans now cannot exceed for the six years. Because you eat a lot of things that you don't know where they are manufactured. You eat a lot of things using the saucepans, which has, which are, which are stainless steel. You get them there, and you're dying of cancer, you're dying of all these diseases, and you don't know where they came from and where they came from. We never had cancer. In Africa, we never had these non-communicable diseases. They, they came with you so refusing to do, to behave and live as Africans, and you choose to live as Europeans, and that's why you and I are dying before the time you are supposed to die. Now, notable things now to note is that next, uh, in a subsequent show, we shall be discussing the European influence in Africa. But before we discuss European influence, we shall also be discussing were they are great leaders in Africa before the coming of Europeans? If we get a chance, I will discuss that for you, ladies and gentlemen, even if it takes 10 minutes or 20, no problem. But let me highlight the four groups of the foreigners that came to Africa. The first group that came to Africa was called the Arab traders. 
The Arab traders are currently highlighted by the Ibn Batuta, who I am talking about. Ibn, for those who know Arabic, Ibn means son of Batuta, son of Batuta. Ibn Batuta was a great traveler in Africa, and he traded, he did a lot of trade in, uh, uh, along the coast of Africa. So, ladies and gentlemen, Ibn Battuta, when you come to UAE, you will find that there are so many things named after Ibn Battuta because he was a great traveler and his intentions were not bad. The Arab traders came and did a lot in Africa. They traded honestly with Africans and Africans benefited from the trade and that's why we still have a close relationship with these Arab traders as compared to Europeans whose intention was, was not only to steal from Africa but also to govern Africa and take away their independence. The Arabs are like they came first. If they had wrong intentions, they would have advocated for taking over the leadership of African countries. But the fact they didn't do that and they focused on trade only and spreading Islam in Africa, we really give them credit that they did a great job to come to Africa and pattern with our African kings and trade with us. Ladies and gentlemen, the second group to come to Africa is called the Explorers. The Explorers include this guy, this great man of mine who I'm calling the great enemy of Africa called uh, Henry Martin Stanley. For them, their purpose was to draw maps, to discover or to make sure to write about Africa. And their major purpose was to look at the lucrative, lucrative places in Africa, those that had the economic viable, um, the economic... Uh, 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 necessities that they, the, the economic raw materials that they wanted, and these guys just spread that information. And they, uh, they are, it is upon their writings and their, and uh, and the maps they drew that led to the colonization of Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, the next group that came was called the missionaries. The missionaries, these are the people that we were told that they came to preach the word of God. But I am asking. I will raise those questions later, but that is what they, what, they, what we are taught in secondary school, that they came to preach the word of God, they came for humanitarian reasons, they came to stop slave trade, and many others. But as Africans, we shall have time to put a critical eye on their activities. If they came to civilize Africa, how come there is no African who can make an airplane? How come there is no African who can make a bicycle? How come there is no African who can who can uh, do, manufacture something of, of importance. I hear whoever they hear has that knowledge to do that. Instead, they don't support him. Instead, they take him to their countries to benefit those countries. And when our African leaders are watching, ladies and gentlemen, the missionaries came to preach the word of God. I will just stop at that. But when it comes to the point of analysis, I will critically look at their roles and what they did in Africa. And then we shall see whether the actual agenda was to preach the word of God. And... Uh, and maybe stop slave trade and like they are saying. Ladies and gentlemen, it should be noted that that some historians come out clear and openly, which they are also Christians like me, but they also say that the flag followed the cross. The flag followed the cross. The, these missionaries came with the cross of the Bible, do not kill, do not murder, do not this or whatever. And in that process, they were softening the hearts of Africa to pave a way for the colonizers, the colonialists to come and take over the countries of Africa. The last group that came following the cross, like I've said, for you are Christians, uh, don't blame me because me now I'm discussing history, I'm not discussing Bible now. When it comes for Bible, I will also have time to discuss what I think is getting wrong with the Bible and what is getting wrong with the Bible users. I will come for that. And I'm very brave. I will discuss those things. Now, colonialists. Colonialists came and what they did was only to take over the African countries, to take over the, uh, the African resources, let it be material, let it be human, let it be material, or all resources of whatever kind. And that's how the kings and the leaders of Africa were brought down, brought down, and the whole African continent was taken over by the European administrators, the French administrators, the British administrators, and it is the genesis where the Africa started losing the, 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 the credibility and the superiority as an independent African continent. These people took our economic independence, these people took our social independence, these people took our political independence, and as up to now, we still still have nothing like independence, like I will be discussing here live and clear on PTV Africa, the voice of the voiceless. Remember you are always with the uh, AR or Anatolian Tertashima 
and at one need to chima is a man of a peace and revolution and he is focusing that one day one time a peace that must rise to the top a peace that must also take part in the decision making of the countries in Africa and must take part in the decision that are made all over the world that is my focus and that is what I believe and that is what I stand on and for you who are sons and daughters of peasants must rise to understand these three concepts that I'm raising. Must rise to understand the value in you and the greatness in you and such that we make Africa great again and we enjoy our Africa because we have now evidence from this uh, teaching that I've just given that Archibram is, is, uh, is called Africa. The original name of Africa is Archibram, meaning mother of mankind, meaning the garden of Eden, the garden of Eden which has everything. So there is no reason as to why you should go start lamenting, I am an African, I'm African, I'm, I'm being segregated against. No, understand that you are the first person to be created by God. Understand that you have the melanin, extraordinary melanin, you can't be attacked by simple disease that kill this and the sun and die center and whatever. An African can suffer from die center and heals and heals without even taking any medication. Don't lose hope. Get encouraged. Stand up. Rise up. Let's go for the revolution to liberate Africa, to make Africa great again. Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by defining a revolution. A revolution is a total change or a fundamental transformation that aims at changing social economic settings of a given society. And the revolution that we need, that is exactly what we need in Africa. That you and I, the revolutionaries who were born and being sat on by the leaders of Africa, that we now, it's high time we rose up now and started participating in liberating our countries, started liberating in participating and making decisions. The great decision that will shape Africa and make Africa great again. For this time, I leave you and uh, encourage you to subscribe to subscribe to this online YouTube channel. Uh, it is PTV Africa and online TV television that aims at informing and educating and to be deliberating most especially on the matters about Africa. Subscribe, share if you have to share and remember keep us in prayer for our dreams about Africa to become a reality as long as we live. May God bless you. And see you in our next session.